Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my work and ideas. Today I will talk about gut microbiome, probiotics, and mRNA. So, what is gut microbiome? Gut microbiome is a combination of various microorganisms including viruses, bacteria, fungi, bacteriophages. There are trillions of microorganisms present in the gut microbiome. According to recent concept, every disease originates from the gut. When there is dysbiosis in the gut, when there is disturbance in the gut microbiome, this is a sign of disease. <coughs> so what specifically dysbiosis means? Dysbiosis means when there are less uh, symbiotic bacteria compared with pathogenic. Uh, it means there are more bad bacteria compared with the good ones. So this condition is called dysbiosis. And dysbiosis is caused by either genetics or drugs or environmental pollutants. And when there is dysbiosis, this, this dysbiosis can be reduced by using probiotics, prebiotics or in combination. Today our actual topic is about probiotics that how it works in terms of its, its uh, communication and role in modulating mRNA. As we know that conventional medication have various side effects including dysbiosis antibiotic resistance and also it leads to other diseases so because of the side effects scientific community is looking for other therapeutics which have less or no side effects so probiotics are biomedicine which have almost no side effects probiotics are used separately or in combination with other conventional therapy therapeutics in drugs so how these probiotics work? Probiotic mechanism, mechanism of action is diverse. Either they reduce the pH, either inhibit bacterial adhesion or may enhance the gut barrier functions. Or in some cases it produces various metabolites which stop and decrease the adhesion of other pathogenic bacteria. But specifically we will talk about mRNA that how probiotics may change uh, expression of some specific mRNA and how they may influence the host physiology. mRNA are short mRNA molecules which ranges from 19 to 22 nucleotides and these mRNA molecules are not translated into specific proteins but they work to enhance or decrease expression of some specific target genes. So how this mRNA are released? Actually mRNA are released in the form of extracellular vesicles, in the form of cells, in the form of sex from cells. The extracellular vesicles not only are released from gut microbiota but the host cells also release some specific uh, microRNA in the form of different vesicles. So there are some specific gut associated mRNA and they have some specific targets and uh, here B, P and his co-workers represented that there are some specific mRNA associated with the gut microbiome and they influence various inflammatory cells like dendritic cells, T cells, macrophages, etc. Also, there are some specific mRNA which are specifically associated with the gut, and that mRNA have specific target in, in the intestine. Not only that the gut microbiome and uh, gut derived mRNA have uh, effect in the gut, but that 
mRNA which are produced, which are associated with the gut, may have influence on the brain function. A recent article shows that the mRNA which are derived and produced in the gut may can have, may can have influence in, on the brain because it can go to circulation, it may lead to brain. Here it's worth mentioning that the gut microbiome not only release mRNA like this are not only the gut microbiome that releases mRNA but also the host cells uh, may release some specific mRNA and may influence the gut microbiome not like the gut microbiome influences the host cell but the host cells also release some mRNA and they may influence the gut microbiome and may change the diversity of the gut microbiome so the communication is bi-directional like gut microbiome associated mRNA influence the host cells host physiology and the host mRNA also affect the gut microbiome and affect its diversity so we can say gut microbiota and mRNA communication is bidirectional. Means that gut microbiome produces mRNA and it influences the host. While host produces mRNA and it and it have influence on the gut microbiome. So the point here is that if there is a use of some specific probiotics and that probiotics, like we already know that probiotic may change the gut microbiome gut microbiome and when there is a change gut microbiome there will be changed uh, production of specific mRNA can say through specific metabolites and then can that can influence the host and so there will have effect in the form of specific mRNA production from differential gut micro microbiome because of a different uh, microbiome due to use of specific the administration of some some specific probiotic strains here uh, we demonstrated that bifidobacterium bifidium play a role in colitis link mrna we use a mice model and administered bifidobacterium bifidium and we found that some specific mrna that that is linked with colitis were down regulated down regulated by administrating bifidobacterium bifidum in the mice model also it's it's important to mention that not only some there are some specific uh, probiotic strains like people already have worked that there are some specific strain like e coli nicely which is a well-known probiotic saccharomyces bol bol ready and some and some other strains they uh, they have they have some some target mrna and they have an effect either they down regulate or down regulate their uh, their specific mrna and their target genes but there are some specific mrna as well that effect and they have a target uh, bacteria strains and they either promote or inhibit the growth of their specific strains so like previous like the previous one a host and gut microbiome mRNA influence each other also there are some mRNA which influence the uh, the growth of some specific bacteria and also there are some some there are some bacterial strains which have effect on some specific mRNA so this communication is also bidirectional so the question arises that how uh, this uh, communication occurs between mRNA and the probiotics or the gut microbiome especially when we use a, spe we use a specific probiotic strain how it regulates uh, some specific mRNA we speculated uh, that this can be because of uh, differential metabolite produced because of a different microbiome due to intervention of a specific probiotic so 
when there is differential uh, metabolites production then that can can leads to uh, different production of mRNA and the different mRNA may can uh, influence the host physiology so host physiology so uh, this can be a possible reason in this article which is which was a review article was published in 2019 also some recent articles demonstrated that probiotic modulate microbial metabolites so we can say that well while using probiotics their metabolites are the actual players when we use a probiotic strain that can change the microbial diversity when the microbial diversity is changed there will be a different production of metabolites and when there are different metabolites then there will have some different microRNA production and so there will have some different targets which can influence uh, the host physiology here are some uh, some recent article mentioned that there are some specific metabolites like starch and fatty acid butyrate they interact with the host cells and a recent article from nature mentioned that gut microbiota enhances enhanced starch and fatty acid which actually starch and fatty acid comes when there are fibers and fibers are uh, metabolized by some specific gut microbiota that they are converted into starch and fatty acid most probably uh, here it demonstrated who it had demonstrated that uh, a specific starch and fatty acid butyrate inhibit the production of some specific mRNA which are responsible and block the translation of uh, p21 which is a vital uh, factor in cancer therapy through hdac are directly blocking some mirna also another article demonstrated that uh, some specific short chain fatty acid like butyrate propionate may uh, influence the b cells differentiation through uh, hdac inhibition hdac hdac means a hist, hist, histone deacylation inhibition in which which may then leads to increased histone acylation and then increased histone acylation may leads to to uh, to, to, pro, to the production of some specific mrna and that specific mRNA inhibit uh, AICDA, PRDM1, and CSR. These are some specific genes associated with B cells, which uh, which work the differentiation of B cells either to IgG, IgA, IgE, or IgM, which is uh, blocked by starch and fatty acid. So these are some specific uh, results from their specific paper where are some specific mRNA which are linked with that uh, specific genes which are responsible for, for, for proliferation of that B cells into different uh, production of different uh, antibodies and they were they were some of them are uh, either highly regulated and some are down regulated so the main theme and main conclusion is that the gut microbiota gut microbiome derived mrna work as as a in epigenetic factors like they don't really change the tna sequence but they change the expression of different genes and so we already mentioned before that mRNA are affected by probiotics and so we can say that probiotics may work through epigenetic pathway through their metabolites like we, we mentioned just before that uh, with the use of probiotics there is a differential production of metabolites and that metabolites, metabolites may affect the host through their mRNA so 
mRNA probiotics may work through epigenetic pathway like changing or like specifically here we mentioned through HTAC they can change their uh, they can change and regulate the host physiology and subse subsequent sub subsequent effect future work related can be like uh, in specific areas a specific geographic location characterize some new strains from local dairy products and evaluate its potential in cells and in mice models and when there is uh, administration of some specific um, probiotic which kind of metabolites are produced and that metabolites produced uh, may have a link with the specific mRNA and a specific disease so this can be an interesting area to work to work with in future also uh, when there is a specific uh, probiotic strain identified it can be commercialized as well thank you and in the acknowledgement section, I have to mention my Hemfield supervisor, Dr. Asfahan from Hazara University and PhD supervisor, Professor Wang and my current, um, current, current PI, Professor, Professor Wu. Because of whom I'm here in the position Thank you once again for the organizer committee who organized this, this nice event. Thank you.